How's it going everybody? Well, we finally hit 1200 subs. Again, I just want to say thank you very much for all the support you guys have given me. It really means a lot. So uh, just leave a comment down below and I'll pick someone at the beginning of the next video and I'll send you something in the mail. Uh, and in the meantime, just check out that merch. And now let's start the video. Alright, so here's some packages that I got recently from eBay. As you guys know, I'm going for a full shmup set on the Sega Genesis or shoot 'em up set and I've just been checking them off one by one as I can find them for pretty decent prices. This game cost me $10 with $2 shipping and it does have its box but there isn't a manual. And this is a game that I don't see that often. It's obviously not worth much. My buddy Samurai Sam showed me this game and I actually quite liked it when we played it, but it obviously doesn't compare with some of the high-end shoot-em ups on the console. This is kind of a joke game too. It's very quirky and everything. Here's a thank you note it came with. It says, thank you for your purchase, leave feedback, which I actually forgot to do. And here it is, it's the Gadget Twins. And it's again, it's a very colorful, quirky game, no manual. This game is two player simultaneous, and it's just a kind of cool experience. It's something different in the shmup genre on the Sega Genesis. Maybe even crosses the beat em up genre. I don't really know exactly what it is. It's just a weird kind of wacky experience that's just different. And there's the back so you can read about it and kind of see what everything looks like. Gadget Twins was published by Game Tech in 1992 exclusively for the Sega Genesis. It's a two-player simultaneous vertical and horizontal scrolling shoot-em-up. The Gadget Twins have to reclaim the King's Gem by flying and swimming through six stages, all complete with end-level boss battles. Throughout the levels you will kill enemies to collect coins to purchase weapon upgrades as well as find other items and treasure chests. The environment really gives off the vibe of Fantasy Zone. Although Gadget Twins doesn't rank up among the greatest shmups on the console, the quirky graphics and popping colors make it stand out. Alright, next up we have a package that cost me $8 with $3 shipping. So 11 total. Now this is one of the things that actually turned out to be one of my favorite things to collect last year. I didn't set out to do it. It wasn't even on my radar of anything I was going to collect, but I just kept finding them out in the wild. So I just kept picking them up and I actually really liked it. This is an official pink Xbox 360 controller. Now this does need some TLC. It needs new thumbstick covers. And the back battery cover here is white, which is obviously the wrong color. It's either supposed to be gray or pink. I'm not sure which one, probably pink. Uh, so I'll have to get a replacement for that. I feel like $11 is cheap enough to buy these when you can't find them in the wild. Like, this is a color that I never saw at all last year. I'm not saying I won't find one next year. It's in nice shape. Like I said, needs some TLC, needs to be taken apart. None of the buttons stick. Everything feels solid. And it's just a nice addition to the collection. I'm just really into collecting these controllers right now. It was a great idea to make so many different colors. They also did this with the Xbox One controllers. And they're really cheap right now, so it's a nice, easy thing to collect that nobody's fighting over. And finally, for the eBay packages, we have one all the way from England. Now, this is a game that is exclusive over there that I had been wanting to try out. But I'm obviously not going to find it over here in the States. And uh, I offered this guy $10 shipped and he accepted. And so this is a Game Boy Advance game. As you guys know, I'm a huge GBA collector. And this is Micro Machines. So there are some good Micro Machines games. Uh, the NES one I've never played, but I always hear people saying how good it is. I did play the PS4 one, which is absolutely awful. It's straight garbage. This is one I want to try out because I think it would fit really well on a handheld. Micro Machines was released exclusively for the Game Boy Advance only in the PAL region in 2002. The game is a top-down racer similar to its predecessors where four micro vehicles race on one of 16 life-size surfaces. There are eight different characters to pick from, three which need to be unlocked, and they have their own unique vehicles to race with, 40 in all. You can choose between cars, motorcycles, tractors, dune buggies, and more, but you'll have to come in first place to advance to the next track. You can also link up to four Game Boys to race each other simultaneously. So the other day I'm walking through my local GameStop and as I'm leaving, I see this box on the ground. This exact box next to the trash cans. Full of trash also, like old receipts and papers and stuff. And I asked the guy, are you throwing these out? And he said, yeah, they're about to go to the dumpster. So I said, can I have them? He said, if you want it, take the entire box. And I picked this up and I ran out as fast as I could before anyone else could tell me no. Now I want to clarify, there are no games here. These are all just the cases and manuals. And they're actually in beautiful shape. The first thing that I noticed was the quality of games in this lot that they were throwing out. I mean, these aren't those nine 99 cent crossword games on the DS that nobody wants that they were chucking out. These are first party games. Um, I've been a big advocate of this stuff not getting chucked for a long time. GameStop has thrown out these things by the thousands. And I used to dumpster dive over there. I used to have a series called Getting Your Dumpster On where I'd show all the promo items and the cases and even some of the games that I grabbed out of there. I mean, look at this Pokemon Soul Silver. There's no manual there, but still, just to chuck that out, that's crazy. 
All they're doing is taking out the game, selling them by themselves, and throwing these out because they're saying that they have no room in the store for them. There's wasted space all over GameStop. This was just a great find. This was the right place, right time as all this was. If I was there a little earlier or a little later, this would have just made it right to the dumpster. And this was one of those places that was like next to a Walmart, so all their stuff is locked. I wouldn't even be able to dumpster dive over there if I wanted to anyway. Next time you're in a GameStop, if you see this stuff being chucked, don't be afraid to ask for it. If you see it in the trash, don't be afraid to ask for it. A lot of times they will give it to you. Next up, we have this local thrift store. Now, I was here probably two years ago. I forgot this place even existed, and I drove by it, and I decided to stop. Now, here, they have all this stuff outside. All these videos and movies up here, I believe, were a dollar a piece. There were a couple games mixed in. The first one here is uh, Wild Earth African Safari, I think that's said. The other one is Championship Paintball 2009. What do we got in here for movies? Bruce Almighty, Zookeeper, probably just 10-footer city in there, but they were just a buck, so it's not the biggest loss. And then when you come in here, I was actually surprised with how many movies and Blu-rays that they had in here. I mean, there's tons of DVDs to the right up there. We do have some Blu-rays. I can't read what they are right here, but um, just a nice selection. I believe the ones in here were a little more expensive than a dollar. Probably stuff that's newer. The other stuff is probably be old, not saying it's bad. Uh, there's King Kong there. What else do we have? Oh, Watchmen. The Hangover Part 2. There's Good Burger up there. As I'm going down, I actually see some games here. The first one here is Madden 15. Now it's not in there because this place is smart enough to keep the discs up front at the desk in a binder. And then we have a bunch of Wii stuff here. Now all the games here were $3 a piece. Here's Tiger Woods 14. As you can see, the $3 written on the back there in permanent marker. And then uh, here's some Wii stuff, Barbie Groom and Glam Pups, also $3. Now here's one I was going to pick up, Hello Kitty Seasons. I see this all the time. I wanted to see exactly what this game was about. I have no clue, but all I've heard is that it's something like Animal Crossing. Here are the three Burger King games, which we've seen multiple times in this series. You guys have probably seen a billion times in your game collecting adventures. And uh, $3 is too expensive for those, but if you can get them for a dollar each or three for a buck, that's the prime way of getting it. Here's Babysitting Mama, Tangled, Ten Footer Lane, Population Me. Uh, L.A. Noir. it was a great game. It was one of my favorite games of its generation. Beat that game. Loved it. I mean, I was awful at it. Brave, uh, Just Dance 4, 3. Here's Just Dance Disney Hits, I think that's called. And then We Sing Pop. Again, three bucks a piece. You can't really beat that. The stuff you're looking for, it's all in really nice shape. And then here are some Halloween costumes. There is a uh, Stormtrooper. These were all kid size. So even if you were going to pick one of these up, you know, for next year, you're not going to fit in any of these unless you're buying them for a kid. And then they had these bins down here, and they're all full of, like, McDonald's toys or Burger King toys, just kind of like fast food toys in general. There's some Funko Mystery Minis down here. I'm trying to think what else is in here. There's all kinds of stuff. There's just r random tchotchke toys or whatever, and these are all 25 cents a piece. So I went through here kind of half-assed. I didn't go through all the way, but I will go back if you guys want to see me go through all of these bins. I don't mind doing that. And there is Sir Hiss from Robin Hood, which is actually a Funko Mystery Mini. And those are actually pretty expensive, They're like seven bucks a piece. At the beginning, we saw some of those Super Mario McDonald's toys. There's some sunglasses. There's one of the Powerpuff Girls. Again, just tchotchke stuff that you kind of find maybe at yard sales or at Savers. This is just all condensed into these bins. Well, it was actually pretty nice. There was a Yoshi one that we just saw. There's a Hello Kitty one. I think that's the Mystery Machine there, the Scooby-Doo uh, van. Aquaman is in there. What else we got? That guy is from Aladdin. There's a plastic wrench in there. There's another Funko Mystery Mini in there. That's one of the My Little Pony ones, the one that's all beefed up. Just random stuff. There's cars down here. Again, some of the stuff is sealed, which is nice. There are definitely people who collect that sealed fast food toys. So for a quarter a piece, that's a great deal. So there's a bunch of games back here. There's Clue Jr. and Mousetrap. Basketball shooting game. There's a fishing game, Monopoly, which there's like a billion versions of now. Uh, Topple. There's a dart game up there, just random stuff. I don't remember if this stuff was individually priced or it was just a set price for all the games. And then they do have some more toys in here. Here's the bigger stuff. There is a Two-Face figure. Uh, there's a Hulk. There's two Buzz Lightyear in here. Now, I do have Woody, and I also found uh, Jesse. And I actually found Bullseye this year, too. Uh, so I wanted a Buzz, but these were a little beat, and they were five bucks. I left it behind. I don't need it right this second, but, I mean, they did work. The batteries were still working, and the stuff lit up and everything. And then in the back here, uh, there were some more games. And then up at the top was this Star Wars Hot Wheels. There's the Millennium Falcon, the TIE Fighter. And then here's what I ended up picking up. Here's Just Dance Disney Party. Now, some of this stuff I just bought to trade, so I'm not even going to show any footage of it because nobody cares. And I did show a Just Dance game uh, previously. It's pretty much the same thing. 
Barbie Groom and Glam Pups. Uh, this is another one I just bought to trade. Three bucks was a good price on it. It was complete. All this stuff was in really nice shape. I mean, no one cares to see any footage. And then here's Tiger Woods PGA 14. I might actually keep this. I was big into Tiger Woods for like one or two years when my buddy had it. And I used to play with him when you could like buy a bunch of upgrades and stuff and make your character better. I thought that was really cool. Uh, so it is a fun game to play. And lastly for the games here we have Hello Kitty Seasons. Now this is a game I absolutely know nothing about but it kind of looks like an Animal Crossing clone and this is the kind of stuff I like to dive into because these are the games that nobody really ever seems to play. Hello Kitty Seasons was released in 2010 exclusively for the Wii. The theme of the game is similar to Animal Crossing where you are a new person coming to a small town. You will take quests from residents that will change as the seasons change. The Sanrio characters like Hello Kitty, My Melody, and the Little Twin Stars are used well here and they look great. The game uses Wii motion controls to guide your character around the town as well as to complete tasks. The game is great for kids, but anyone looking for an older experience should stick to Animal Crossing. And here are the toys that I picked up. The first one is Darth Maul, which is new in the bag. Here's Yoshi, I got that from my girlfriend. And the last one here is the Funko Mystery Mini, which is Sir Hiss from Robin Hood. A quarter a piece was a great deal on those, and it was just a great family-run thrift shop overall. And finally, here's this Craigslist ad that I came across. It's just titled Piles of Video Games. Uh, this guy's just saying that he has a bunch of games, he doesn't want them, and uh, just make him an offer and come get them. Here is a ColecoVision plug and play. Here is just an awful picture of two Super Nintendos in a bin or something like that. Here is the same picture, but just a little better with an N64. Can't really see any games in that. And then here are just some games on the table. Now I'm going to zoom in so we can take a look at which games are actually here. And there's Super Mario World 2, Zombies Ate My Neighbors is there, Blues Brothers, Batman Returns, there's Ren and Stippy Time Warp, I think that's Wheel of Fortune. Anyway, the guy wanted about, I think, $5 to $10 a piece. Here are 10 games that I got from him. I think I paid him $72 for all of these. Now, these are dirty, they're grimy. The guy smoked in his house, these obviously were not taken care of, so we're going to clean these up and see what they'll look like afterwards. Now, there's some stuff on here we can't fix, like label damage like that. Uh, that's unfixable, which is fine. We're just trying to clean these up the best we can. Some of them do look fine, They're just a little coating of grime here and there, but the other ones, I don't know how well they actually will clean up. So anyway, let's, let's clean these things up now. All right, let's take a closer look at some of the lesser known titles here. The first one here is the Blues Brothers. I didn't even know this game even existed for the Super Nintendo. Um, the library for the Super Nintendo is gigantic, so there's always new games to find. The Blues Brothers was developed and published by Titus in 1992 for the Super Nintendo. The game can be played as either a single player, where you play as either Jake or Elwood, or a co-op platformer. You have to run, jump, and shoot your way to the jukebox at the end of the level to progress to the next. There are 34 levels in all. Throughout the game, you can pick up records that are used to kill enemies, as well as upgrades that make you invisible, increase your speed, or turn you into a Super Blues Brother. Now here is Looney Tunes B-Ball. This is a Sunsoft game that you almost never see. I think I've only seen two copies of this game in my life. So you can see that this cart is actually yellowed by probably smoke and there's no getting rid of that. Looney Tunes B-Ball was published by Sunsoft and released in 1995 exclusively for the Super Nintendo. The game is a 2 on 2 arcade style sports game in the same vein as NBA Jam. Four people can play together with the use of a multi-tap. There are eight well-known characters to pick from like Bugs Bunny, Marvin the Martian, and Elmer Fudd that all have different attributes. 
Throughout the game, if you pick up gems that appear on the court, you can use special abilities like throwing a pie in your opponent's face or a special full court shot. You can adjust the difficulty, the wacky meter, the characters, the controls, and the game type to suit whichever way you want to play. Now lastly for the lesser known games, here's Ren and Stimpy Time Warp. This is a game I don't see that often, but I uh, cleaned up fine, but I know that a lot of Ren and Stimpy games are known to not be that good. Ren and Stimpy Time Warp was published by THQ in 1994 exclusively for the Super Nintendo. The goal was to get 47 million Gritty Kitty proofs of purchase in order to redeem them for a time machine. The game is a two-player simultaneous side-scrolling beat-em-up where you can play as Ren or Stimpy. You are also able to do co-op attacks. The music voices, sound effects, and animations are all spot on here and the show's humor as well as source material are used well. Ren and Stimpy games are known to be more missed than hit, but overall this one feels a lot like the show. And here's the final overview of the games that we just cleaned. They're not perfect, but they're pretty much as good as they're ever going to look. I cleaned all the boards, the casings, and the labels, and they look a whole heck of a lot better than they did before. Now, there is still cart discoloration and label damage, and that's something that just can't be fixed, and that's fine. The stuff has been ignored for years, and no one ever took care of it, so all we wanted to do was just get this stuff looking as good as we possibly could to either put in our own collection or to trade with other people. What have you been listening to? What have you been playing? What have you picked up lately? Have a happy holidays. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay nerdy. Getting your nerd on. Getting your nerd on. Getting your nerd on. I got a raging nerd on.